Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. It is Rose on All Stars. Um, first, we would like to dedicate today's program to the PDP women leader in Kogi State who was murdered in her home on the 18th of November. She was, she was burnt to death by some thugs who are allegedly faithfuls of the APC government. That is uh, Mrs. Achebo Abu. I have been speaking with her husband, Elder uh, Simon Babani Abu. And then, um, of course, what do we expect? He's completely devastated by the death of his wife. He's, um, he can't stay in the state. But he's afraid for his life. And of course, um, he said some people have been reaching out to him. The PDP candidate in Kogi State, that's engineer Musa Wada of the, the PDP, yes. He has reached out to him with his wife, but um, that's just the much he has got because um, condolence messages would just not be enough. We, he needs all the support he can get at this point, emotional support and, of course, financial because he, not, he didn't just lose his wife, his house and of course there's going to be preparation for barriers and a whole lot of other issues. This is really sad. This is not how democracy should be practiced anywhere in the world. You know, even if, it's, um, even if evolution is just beginning for man, for was to think we have to kill someone to make a statement or just because just to get power it's really it's, it's really sad that as humans we have degenerated to this level so much violence in the country it's 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 really really pitiable so we were dedicating today's program to her and sadly there's been violence against women across Africa, especially political leaders, or women who are bold enough to stand up to speak against, you know, the powers that be. It is, it's really sad indeed, because women should be protected. And you know, there's a popular saying in Nigeria, I think that started in the 80s, that goes, um, how um, do they put that? When you educate a woman, you educate a nation so our women should be protected and i also like to say uh, a happy birthday to former president good luck jonathan he turned 62 and a lot of messages have been pouring in for uh, for him and i guess right now um he's gaining his strides in the political scene because um his candidates won at the Bayelsa state <laughs> election that was consult, conducted on the 16th. That's David Lloyd. So he's, um, he's winning back his strides in the political scene. So congratulations to him and, of course, his wife. We have a candidate from um, Kogi State. She's of the SDP, Barista Natasha Adiza. She's joining us from a base in Kogi State. So we'd like to speak to her so she could talk to us about what it was like in that election, which observers have made known is violence field. Barrister Natasha, thank you very much for joining us. Um, good evening, Rose. Um, I first let me apologize for not being in your studio. I ought to have been in London by now, and I should have been there live with you. But unfortunately, I had some engagements which were which were really critical and that caused me to move my flight but never to worry i hope to be with you in london next week and i promise to make a stop by your studio thanks for having me it's good and to hello have you i will really do appreciate that you're taking this time to talk to ross and i guess a lot of accolades have been pouring in for you to being a woman and deciding to go into politics where they are like a lot of strong men, and not just strong men, some that tend to be brutal in their approach to politics. Yeah, that's true. Um, we've all heard the saying that politics is dirty, there's a lot of violence, and um, that has actually made a lot of people, let me say decent people like you and I, to shy away from that. 
And on the flip side, it, it's just that um, suddenly that space seems to be occupied by thugs who have gotten clinch of the powers and have refused to let go and are doing everything possible to ensure that they, are, they maintain hold of that authority to utilize the power for their advantage. And then talking about me being a woman and finding the courage to participate in politics, I think I'll give myself a pat on the back because definitely it's not been easy. Being it that in the history of Nigeria, it's never produced a female elected governor. And that's quite sad considering the fact that women have played a huge role in shaping and growing democracy as it is today. And um, it was a lot of violence involved. It was very tough. I have three children. I had to care about the nasties that were being shared on me on Facebook and all the other media. Because you know one thing, when you get into politics, apart from the physical attacks that you get, such as um, harms, bodily harms being, are being thrown at you, you also get the chance of being smeared and torn to pieces and read stuff about yourself that you never thought existed. And of course, being a woman, such vile words were just available to them, you know, and yes, it's, um, yes. Yeah, it took you know, a lot. We're, we're, we're going to touch on that because I actually have a video of this lady in, um, in Uganda who was treated badly. The security officers were actually pulling her by the breast just to get her out of the vehicle to arrest her because there's a planned protest. I'm going to leave that hanging. We'll touch on that. But I want to ask you this. I'm not going to put it to you why you got into politics because we know this is one of the ways we can correct things in our society. But, you know, it's like usually in Nigeria, politics has become a two-horse race between the APC and the PDP. Why didn't you pitch your tent with any of those parties? Why did you choose to go with the SDP? I mean, this is a party that's been on for, um, that is practically a lot of people think Phil is dying, if, if not dead. Why didn't you pitch, pitch your tent with the PDP or the APC? Okay, let's start by saying I, um, I'm of the opinion of um, that one should not really succumb to the ideals of attaching oneself to either of the two parties. If you're courageous enough, you can actually grow your own party. Macron actually um, had him, he established his own party called and March Forward just a year and then ran upon that platform. So it all about, it's all about the courage of the persons and trying to find an ideology that resonates with the person politically. But uh, let me say this. Initially, last year, immediately I joined, into, joined politics, I actually started with the APC. Okay. Then, um, yeah, I actually started. I was advised to start with the APC, and then, but that experience wasn't good enough because the governor himself, Ayahaya uh, Bello, uh, the governor of Kogi State, he called me aside and told me to step down, that he wasn't going to give me a chance to contest for the seat of Senate. Mind you, I contested for Senate and in the February, February 23rd election, that's general election, which of course I was rigged out. So when he told me the point blank that I wasn't going to be given a third chance to participate and um, he would not have me even participate in the primaries. So at that point, in the, in the wake of threats, I had to leave APC and I went through the manifestos of many other political parties and I settled for the SDP because I find in its words there in the manifesto that it resonates strongly with the concerns of the masses and it's a bit of a mix it promises a bit of a mixed economy to socialism and um, capitalism so that's it uh, but right now of course there are some limitations with um, the sdp um, because the other two majors have a sort of a, a stronger structure around and uh, they have already um they have some hinges in, should I say, the systems across the country which aids the success of an election. I myself realized I was more popular than the party during the campaign. I realized I was more popular than SDP. And then I mm -hmm. had to realize that, look, it wasn't going to be my name or my face on the ballot. So I yes. had to devise a means of selling the party. I actually had to purchase horses move the horses down to Kogi State and have people visualize what white horses are. And look, that's the logo, it's the white horse, it's okay. not just the fashion streets. So there was a whole lot I had to do to bring um, the party to the front. But it's actually it's sad because when you look at, um, looking at politics today, uh, this yes. big 
majors today, these big political parties, have actually been a, a stumbling block in the success of democracy and ensuring that the will of the people actually um, comes forth. It is very expensive to run, and that's actually where corruption starts because you then have to have godfathers, you have to have connections with the police, your party needs to have connections with, the, with INEC, and all of this bodies that ought to be neutral somehow need to take side with either of the two parties. That's when I realized. And my hope is that Nigeria needs to step out and needs to evolve its electoral processes to even have independent candidates, just like it's done in, 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 um, in, in Kenya. If Nigeria today had, if it had, if there was provision for independent candidates, I would have just run myself. I said, okay, you know what? Hey, this is my manifesto. I connected the people. If you believe I should serve as Senate or I think that's governor, then you give me your votes. So um, in all I'm saying is, yes, we do have two political parties that are strongly at uh, par with each other, and they have actually dampened the growth of our democracy. It's not healthy for us. We are in need of a third force. and um, But then it also means every other party needs to come together to identify the need of the young people and the future generation and how we can move the social political space towards a better economic advantage and stop thinking about what the godfathers want and i mean with due respect to this i just looked at i watched the video that's been trending of the apc by elsa candidate i don't know if i'm talking about it i'm sure you must have seen it rose yes and when i watched that i had the first question i asked i was like what is the man's uh, educational qualification I was like he barely finished primary school i was like okay with due respect I mean, I'm saying this, it's really sad, but if we talk about setting the standards of leadership and the output of a particular person, the people need to understand that they cannot go further than the vision of their leader. Yeah, yeah that, so that's, that's really... So I don't, by the end of the day, like I said, with due respect yes. congratulations to himself, but if we are comparing ourselves to Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, Rwanda, then we need to look at their leaders and see, okay, that we should give opportunity for people who can perform who meet the standards because that's the only way we can grow yes okay now some um civil liberty society and they have they said with their calculation towards this election the one that was held of course on the 16th that there were going to be indications there would be there were indications of violence did you see this in any way you mean that it was like a premonition, like there was going to be yes. violent? Of course, we actually um, brought, we spoke about that, myself and other other parties in Kogi State. We drew at the attention of the police and the general public with regards to the growth and grooming of a lot of militia in Kogi State. What um, was happening was uniforms were being sewn and handed over to people on the street, young boys, young men, and also they were given guns that were more sophisticated than those being carried by the police. So, and, um, but of course, no one said a thing. It was almost as if there was some sort of collaboration that, okay, groom your militia and let's walk in hand to ensure there's violence enough to destabilize the system, the space, so that we could aid rigging. So, and what happened was on that day, <laughs> on that day, you could see a truck come out with uh, men in guns, wearing uniforms, you can't tell whether they were fake or real. But, you know, being uh, an obedient indigenous and citizen of Nigeria, you just had to obey the orders because it said that you're only a fool argues with a man holding the gun. So it was unfortunate that even though the uh, commissioner of police, the IG of police said he deployed 32,000 uh, okay. policemen to Kogi State, and uh, we still had that amount of violence. I begin to wonder where were they. And but when you look at the videos that came out on the election, especially in Okoja, you see that the police itself aided and abated, uh, aided the Regans. They did. Even the police helicopter. There was a video that was going round yes. there. The police helicopter was shooting down at the people and even throwing tear gas to help those on the ground to read, to okay. to, to cut away with the ballot paper. So, um, but my fear, the danger there is this is. Now the elections have come and gone. But we ask ourselves, will they be able to retrieve all of these guns that have gotten into the wrong hands? Because if that does not happen, if you do not retrieve these guns, wearing the, then what we're going to have is armed robbers. Arm, the armed robbing will be on the high rise and kidnappings. Because okay. these young men, I bet you most of them are not educated. They did not go through the regular intelligence uh, training to understand what it means to hold a gun, which can, which can take away one's life. 
They don't have these basic trainings, and then they are equipped with such an with such a sophisticated weapon, you know. So then I bet you just watch the next few months. They are going to be on the sadly, street robbing and killing. Sadly, sadly so. President Mamadou Buhari has congratulated both the winners of um, the Bayasa State election and Kogi State. But you see, for, for me, I, I think that the Bayasa State election, I really don't want to touch on that because we do understand what went wrong what went down because that was basically politics but the one that just blew everyone off our minds is is the sort of violence that you know was perpetrated in kogi state so mr president have said congratulations to the winner of the kogi state election he said it's an election a victory well deserved despite the fact that civil societies organizations have called for the cancellation of this election so this is just two questions in one do you think the press mr president is aware of the violence that took place in that state one and secondly do you think the elections should be cancelled first phase um i have come to realize that there's a political phase that the president has to put forth with respect to his party and um, i also know that he does not hold and control his twitter handle he's usually uh, some media uh, men that do that but that being said um, I'm actually disheartened and disappointing that the president will put such a congratulatory message to Yahaya Bello uh, because I believe that the duty to the president is greater than his duty to APC. And um, lights were lost, properties were destroyed, terror was being unleashed to the indigents, and today an average child in Kogi State there fears the sound of gone shots and has nightmares. So these are things that should actually worry people that, okay, and worry the president. So what good is one man's brutal victory to the advantage of the rest of us? And um, of course, um, but like I said, the president has a duty. I know that in down he's aware of the violence and I do not believe that he's okay with that. But sometimes when you have advisors around you who say you have to put this, because I'm saying this because I have been in situations whereby I've watched some of these high power negotiations whereby the voices of those around will drown the voice of the president himself. And um, yeah, that's on that part. Now, secondly, I do believe the election should be canceled. That was no election at all, Rose. That was no election at all. That was a civil war. Like hmm. I was in there trying to vote and I was hearing gunshots, gunshots. I had to call about 50 policemen to accompany me to my polling unit. So people who don't even turn out in their numbers. So the figures that APC ran through in Kogi Central and Kogi State, that does not reflect it. There was very poor turnout, and most of them voted for me. That's okay. the truth. But you see, so am I, I do side with um, the views of um, the international organizations and national NGOs who uh, yes. observed the elections. And I do stand with the fact that that was no election. It should be canceled. It's actually an insult to democracy that a winner was declared out of that horrible experience. Okay. Mind you, we are writing history. And if you, I don't know if you had a chance to look at um, at the report from the general elections that took place in February and March, February 23rd and March 9th. Yes. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't that clean enough. But the, the government of Nigeria promised the international communities and the NGOs, national NGOs, that they were going to improve upon these electoral processes. So this... November 16th election was actually a litmus test. And we have shown that not only did we fail, we okay. failed woefully. Yeah. This election of Kogi State in particular was, was the worst ever in the history. Worst okay. ever in the history. But it's not like, the, the, the region, no, let me tell you, Rose, yeah. in as much as you saw some videos, it's different when you are in there. All the polling units are speaking for SDP. But, but that is one question I would not... like to put to you because some of the videos we saw, we saw women dancing and, and, and they, they went, um, what, um, GYB, four, four by four, pow, pow, pow in the air. Oh, yes. Oh, we yes, saw men course. doing that. So I, is this, uh, in my, you, you, you are from Kogi State. Do you want to, yes. would you tell us, is it like violence is yes, um, yes. not alien this. to these people? Is like, is, is it that... Kogi states because this is the kind of the sort of comments I received on social media that there's so much violence in Kogi state and the people are even used to it. It's true. It's true. Uh, I'm sad to say this, but it's true. I'm from I'm from the same zone uh, district with the governor. That's Ibira predominantly, and out of lack of employment and 
legal engagement of the youth, they have turned to become political thugs. More, so as unfortunate as it is, that's, the, that's what is happening right now. And so most of them, the governor actually succeeded in putting forth this narrative that there was an ethnic, it was became an, an ethnic agenda. That means yes. the Igalas against the Iberas, and the Igalas have ruled for so long, so now is a chance for an Iberian man to hold the mantle of leadership for another four years. You know, and so it now became like a cult kind of uh, movement and it turned violent because, you know, like I said again, an average person in this, an average young person on the streets in Kogi Central is uh, prone to violence because if they, they turn out to be political thugs out of um, lack of employment, valuable, valuable means of employment. So that song, actually, which trends right now, it happens to be the governor's jingle. That's his main campaign song. That was a song that was sung everywhere. How old is this life. governor? He's young. And, and you know what? He's a youth. He's you just, wait, wait a minute. This guy is what, 42, 43? He's actually about 50. He reduced his age. And he's championing violence in the state? Yes. Yes. And using and the you, youth? What the, what the jingle says is that anyone, you know, a part of it was spoken in the local dialect. Okay. So all it says is that well, anyone who says that GYB is not going to come here for his second term should come meet us and we are ready with our ta 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 ta. You this, understand? This, this is sad. This is sad. That's sad. And, like... and that was what they did. And everybody was singing it, even children. I was like, it now became like a trend. Like, wow, it's like, do they really understand the implications of this? Like, and it's, it's sad because the governor even, it, it, like I said, that's the welcome. Yeah, song I saw these lovely women singing that song. Ta ta ta. I mean, you see that. And you see, this is why I want I want the whole country, especially the president, to be aware that Yahya Bello, even though he was a candidate at that time, yes. he was still and he's still the governor. He swore an oath to protect lives and property. He's a chief security officer. Having viol having the gunshot sound as his jingle is wrong. In a normal climate, that man ought to be arrested for visibly promoting violence. We you, cannot take this. And you, you see, know, the silence of these institutions that have allowed him go forth and then rig and be declared a winner. So what are you then telling? How did you preach to a, an Indian to be good? How you know, did you preach was, to someone like I was going to put this question to you, like what evidence... I just I wanted to ask what evidence um, do, do you have, or maybe the PDP has, um, that those perpetrating violence in the states are agents of Governor Yabelo? I'll speak for know? myself. I will you... speak for PDP. I'll speak for myself. Okay. From my own personal experience, I don't know if you are aware of the fact that I was actually harassed. I was attacked at the peace pact that was being organized by INEC. Yes. Just uh, four days to election, five days to election on Tuesday. That was last Tuesday. Um, when I went in there in the presence of, a, of lots of my military policemen, in the hall was seated the Inspector General of Police, the AIG, the INEC uh, Chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and many other dignitaries. And right there, outside the door of the hall, there were about 30 thugs. And these thugs, some of them had the GYB, the Ayabelos hats. Yes. They had the APC mufflers. They had some APC t-shirts. And then they attacked me. When I mean attack, like hit me and fell me to the ground twice. In the presence of all of these security agencies. And not one of them could stop these goons from doing that. So what that tells you is that, I, I'm telling you from my eyes, I saw that they are actually APC thugs. And for them to be in that same is that vicinity that ordinarily there should be nobody there except you are a stakeholder. That means you ought to be a member yes. of, the, of, of the political parties or the candidates coming to sign the pact. You ask yourself, what are these go goons doing there? But that tells you, I heard later on that they accompanied the governor there and they waited outside on an instruction that I would not be allowed in. That I should not be allowed in, and that was why when I was being attacked. But but why do you think the, the the governor is very particular about you? Do you guys have a history together? Well, of course we are from the same place, and like I told you, I was in APC then, and um, he the governor doesn't like the fact that I have enough guts and courage to dare him. Yes. He told me personally that he was that he's going to grow himself to become the Putin of Nigeria. This was then, and he told me as well that. Um, 
you know, he's going to run Kogi State, how Tinubu runs Lagos, determining who and who is ready to set himself as the godfather, controlling the entire structure of the state. These were words that came from his mouth to me while I was still in APC then in August last year. I just joined politics, like I told you. Yeah. So, um, and he was very clear about it, that look, he, was go he has the money and he has all control of all the missionaries and he was going to frustrate me and I should not dare him. So while he also spoke to other, we're about 11 aspirants for the senatorial election, most of them stepped down, about nine of them stepped down. I moved to that party and so I now confronted his candidate. And I gave him a really tough fight. And you see why he's uh, particular about me is because I'm knowledgeable. I have got content. I have a huge followership beyond even Kogi State. And people like him, small-minded leaders, are really intimidated and afraid that, okay, the moment Natasha steps in and holds some authority, that I'm going to groom more people like me. Do you understand? And then gradually... The narrative of leadership will change from becoming one led by thugs and misfits to one led by intelligent technocrats. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. So, and, and like I told you earlier on when we started, when we started this discussion, this um, interview, yes. I told you about Nigeria generally today. The level of stand of leadership leaders we have today is because they are being sponsored by godfathers just to hold space and do their biddings. They are not people who are intelligent enough. To, to drive okay. social economic reforms. Okay. And all we, we are at the point in Nigeria of breaking that. If we can just come in mass, we educated folks who are peace loving, united driven, um, unifyingly driven, uh, patriotic people, just come together and say, you know what? We cannot keep having the worst of us rule the best of us. We cannot keep admiring America, admiring Rwanda. We should, you know, please. We have, we, long ago, we used to admire UK and foreign, other foreign countries. Right now, we're admiring our fellow African countries. But enough of this. Nobody will grow Nigeria for us. So, so much, we just have to put our heads together in the top and take this authority from them. So that is what the governor has seen in me. And that's why he considers me a threat. Mind you, I'm also a lawyer. And um, in the, if you look at the way I, I fought through the, um, the tribunals, and even when, you know, I was disqualified as well. Rose, you didn't even ask me about my disqualification. I you know what? You know what? I was also disqualified. You know something? I've got loads of questions for you. I wanted to ask you about Nigeria's democracy being in clear and present danger, and I want to know what you're going to do from here. But guess what? I'm going to leave that till you come to our studios next week. So we um, have you live. Well, and many, we're going to have the lines have? open so our viewers can engage with you. How, how about that? More how long do I have to stay? So, because there's some things I really need to touch. <laughs> like um, my, <laughs> like my disqualification, um, yes, which I saw as also a political conspiracy. And I told you that once these guys get into authority, they do everything possible to just make sure that they hold and control power to their own personal selfish advantage. Yes, and um, I was for whatever reason disqualified by INEC. I had to fight that through the court. So like I said, again, you asked me why the governor was very particular about me. It's not just the yes. governor. It's many, some of the other guys don't like my... So many people in government don't like my guts because they feel this lady is educating people. I'm very out there. I have a very active social space. And these are things that trend people. You know, to control the mass, you need to control the media. Yes. And here I am. I can make a post and it goes viral. Yeah. I can speak to the people directly. And that's why I'm a threat. I'm not one to be cowed. And... Of course, I'm a woman. And you know one thing about women, Miss um, uh, Rose? Yes. When, 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 we when a woman is determined to make something, to make a an, an impact, nothing stops her because she fights from her soul. Definitely. And once you fight from the soul, no matter the bullet that hits you, no matter the insults, you just show it up and focus on the but goal. Really, do, you think your life, do you think your life is in threat? Like, maybe like, there's is. a threat to your life. Is that what, do you think there's a threat to your life? Yes. Of course it is. Um, there's there, there's threat to my life, and I have actually written a letter to the ID of police two days ago, notifying him of the threat. Yeah, Bello has long tried to kill me, not even just this election, but during the senatorial elections. and um, But he failed, and I pray he's going to fail, because my life is not in his hands. But that I, saying that, I tend to apply caution with my movements, and um, hopefully... He, I, I call him out whenever I get sense of this threat. I put it in the open so he knows that I have. I know it's coming from him. And if it should anything happen to me and my my family and any of my followers, he is going to be held responsible. 
So that's what I do. I know there's threat to my life. I mean, okay. this is Nigeria. Democracy this, has created this... such a bad state. Okay. Um, we applaud what you do, and believe me, a lot of Nigerians are really, really support you, supporting you, and they are behind you. Um, <laughs> Thank you this all. is this is dangerous waters, and it seems to be really seem to be really bad in it Kogi is. State, considering that um, the, the lady who was uh, who was murdered in her home on Monday, so even yeah. two days after the election, she was burnt alive. She was screaming, wanting to come out, but the guys were threatening her. They were throwing bottles at her. I mean, there was no way she. They could, were shooting she at could her. Escape. Like what happened? They, they were shooting at her. Like. When they poured petrol around the house and set it on fire, each window she tried to jump out of, they were shot in the window. So she couldn't even escape until she died. And she cried like she was crying on, until until she died. People, you this, were just hearing her shout. I can't I even mean, imagine this. These the are shout. the things you see in some Hollywood this. movies. This is unbelievable. It's, it's so sad that we have degenerated to this point in Nigeria. It is. It is sad. It's alarming. It's unbelievable. It is, it is annoying. It's sickening. I can't. I can't believe it. I'm just completely blown away. It's badly so sad. So sad. Natasha. Yes, please. We commend you. Keep doing what Thank you're you. doing, and the good Lord will, will, will keep but you. But let, let me say this. I, I do not want um, the scenarios that uh, affected my elections to deter other women from coming up our other men of intelligence and capacity. I want us to come out. Look, it's a battle to save Nigeria. Yes. And that's well, if I have stepped in, anybody else can. People should step in. And we should we have to join fo voices and forces. We we complain that INEC is corrupt. Who is who makes up INEC individuals? We speak to them. We make protests. We we, we, we air our opinions and of course prefer solutions for these reforms. If we talk about the police not being friendly, let us engage. Let's speak about these reforms. Let's the, the, the power is actually in our hands. So but if we do if we if we don't join if we join don't join hands together then we can't stand strong and fight. This is a fight for the soul of Nigeria. Yes. And we just have to, because nobody, but Rose, let me tell you, I've had thoughts, some of my friends say, Natasha, leave Nigeria, relocate to UK and, and America and all this. But I keep thinking in my mind, if all of us leave Nigeria, who will fight for her? Nobody oh. knows how the world will be tomorrow. Look at America now, trying to tell all foreigners to go back to their countries. What yes. if every other country tomorrow says, you know what, go back to your home? You don't know what the next 10 years will be. Yes. So it's not for us to grow this country. We have no other home than Nigeria. Yes. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm in here. It's not, they've not even started hearing about Natasha. I'm coming. <laughs> Natasha, I'm this in is here. beautiful. Nigeria is ours to build. Nigeria, see, Nigeria is ours to build. I'm not going nowhere. And if you keep pushing me, they will see the other. I will enter gear seven very soon. I've been on gear five. When I enter gear seven, I tell you, I'm with you, Rose, and every other person joining forces. I tell you. We Believe me, we are all we there. Can. We are all there together. This I system must change. It must we change. If the to, men are not we doing good, to. we boot them out and the women will take over. Yes, yeah, so I think it's yeah. about time. So we can show them Definitely. how to lead a country. Definitely. When, people say, when people say, oh, you're a woman, or we're not, we, we don't know how you're going to serve as a governor. And I'm like, look at Nigeria. We've had men leading yes. Nigeria. Are you proud with what it is? They said no. I said that means give women a chance. Definitely. You have not had a woman governor before. Definitely. Maybe that's what is missing. And the truth is, that is what is missing. Because men and women are made uniquely, beautifully by God. We all yes. have our strength. A woman has a nurturing calm ability. And that is what she needs to be given a chance to translate to groom her, groom her community, and that is groom what her state, and, and groom the country. The but a man, they do respect the to men. They just think, you know, action... That. They don't have plan B, plan C, plan D, plan D. So I think it's all about women. Women need to be given a chance to help shape their own community, Definitely. states, and country. It's about Thank time. You. True, Natasha. About Very time. true. Congratulations for the feat Thank so, you so far. Much. We applaud you. We applaud you. you. Congratulations. You've done well. So we'll be looking forward to, to talking to you because uh, we have to flog this issue we have to keep talking about it the change which we all yearn for um, in our great nation would definitely come to up come to pass and then we would have the nigerian of our dreams within our lifetime thank you very yeah. much there
Thank you so much. I appreciate. Thanks for having me. Take care. Okay. See you soon in London. See you. Okay. Take care. Bye. <laughs> okay, viewers. I'll be speaking to Barist, um, Barista Natasha Adiza Akoti, the governorship candidate for Social Democratic Party at the just concluded elections in Kogi State. I also have um, in the studio with me the General Secretary of PDP UK Chapter, Ambassador Ugochuku Mora, and of course, Iboru Otu, the governorship candidate, Abundant Nigerian Renewal Party for the 2019 general elections. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You've been very patient. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. Chris. So, what's your observation about the election? And of course, the discussion I have been having with Natasha, you've been very patient, gentlemen. I most appreciate you for that. Oh, of course. It's uh, mm -hmm. amazing to be here and to listen to her. Yes. And uh, as you can hear, she's very determined to join the fight in changing Nigeria. And uh, she spoke from her heart. And it's very sad the experiences she's had to go through as yes. a candidate. Um, obviously, it goes to buttress our own point, my own view. It was the same thing during my own elections as well in my state. Yes. Democracy in Nigeria is, a, it's a, is under threat. And it calls for all Nigerians to join hands and get things right. I don't have any more thing to add. She said everything. Yes. Um, so I, I thank God for her life. I hope God keeps her alive to be able to see the fight to the end. And I believe yes. that she will still be the governor of Kogi State to get the state forward. Yes. Mm. Very well. What mm. about you, sir? Well, thank you, Rosa. Mm. Thank you for having me. Um, I was very inspired listening to her. In fact, um, I don't know what much to add than to... Mm add to the clamor for people to get involved and, uh, and move Nigeria forward. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem has been the, the political process. You see, for you to get the best to rule over us, you have to make the process to be fair mm -hmm. so that um, people who have the capacity to work for Nigeria can emerge victorious. So it's a pity with the kind of uh, violence that we witnessed in Kogi State. And one might be wondering, is it really true that there was violence? But listening to her, someone with first-class uh, information, information yeah. who witnessed the violence uh, uh, head-on, <clears throat> you will know that uh, what happened in Kogi State was a charade. It wasn't an okay. election. Just hold on. <coughs> the PDP yeah. chairman, that's Uche Secondus, have called for the cancellation of both the election in Kogi State and in um, Bayelsa State. Are you of that opinion? Well, as a lawyer party party member, yes. I, I should uh, agree with uh, what the leadership is leaning towards. Uh, with the kind of violence we saw in Kogi State, it's, 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 it's common um, fact to call for the cancellation. Because when you even look at the result itself, because I was looking at the result myself, I saw some local governments where APC will have 112,000 votes and PDP will have 300 votes. And when you look at the, the person of uh, Yayabelo, a governor who was not paying salaries, who did not connect with the people, and was able to win a, a landslide majority. So um, cancellation of the election is the, is the best thing to do under the circumstance. What about you? Yeah, um, especially regarding Kogi State. I mean, mm -hmm. there's enough information online yes. to show that clearly lives have been lost and a lot of uh, violence has taken place. So that uh, win is very questionable. Uh, with Bayelsa, uh, I, I'm not very sure about how it went uh, with regards yeah. to violence and all the rest of them, but I mean, information is still coming forward. So I okay. believe that um, if by the grace of God the candidate of PDP approaches the tribunal, which I believe he would do, um, let's see if justice is going to be served. And I hope they have the, because now in Nigeria it's all built on technicalities that are very vague. Our electoral laws are really very open ended. So. Um, I think uh, we are not doing well when it comes to elections and uh, more should be done to protect the votes of the people, especially regarding uh, state elections. Why is it that it's, a, it's been a general view that mm. um, we all seem to be okay with what happened with the um, Biosa state elections? I'm not okay. No, there's this general view, there's a role of the story. Oh, no, 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 leave, let's leave Bayelsa out of it, but not Kogi State. I'm not saying we should leave Bayelsa out mm -hmm. of it. I, I believe a lot of people could rig without killing. It's just that Kogi is actually taking the thing so high. Sometimes when you see one very stark reality, you tend to accept the one that's not very bad. You know, people like to pick either or. 
But I'm not saying I accept what's, what happened in uh, Bayelsa. I'm just hoping that, I'm not hoping, um, well, if the candidate of the PDP approaches the tribunal, he should be able to prove his points with the facts that he's got. I'm not saying that the guy in Bayelsa won. Of course, there are also information you know, filtering out there. We just want elections to be great. I don't think that Bayelsa should be ignored. And I think both candidates or all the candidates involved Like should. politics took yeah. place in Bayelsa. The uh, governor did not listen to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. he, was, he wanted to put his cousin forward, just like what Okorecha was doing, and yeah, all of that. Yeah, Rose, if you, if you look at uh, Bayelsa State, that has been a PDP state from 1999. Yes. And for us to lose the election, you must know that there are some elements that played um, along that. Um, there is a, a case of uh, infighting within the PDP, which we are still looking into. Um, the stakeholders not agreeing with the choice of the governor. And this is the reason why some of us joined politics, to see how we can bring about reform within the political party. Because we'll be here crying about fairness in the political process. You have to also look at the fairness in the process within the party. Okay. Okay, because people imagine from the party is very crucial to the development of Nigeria. So we are still looking at looking into that to see what actually happened. Why did the PDP members revolt against the party in that election? And these are part of the things we have to understudy. And by next year, like you know, we haven't mentioned it to the public yet. Yes. There's going to be a conference here in the UK whereby we bring about all the various reforms that we want to take place in the PDP. Mm -hmm. So for bias state, it's something we're still looking into to understand why there was um, a revolt against the party within, okay. within the state. The, the, we know Patience Jonathan, she's a power broker in Bios State with her husband. So it's their candidate who won at the end of the day. Does this make them, you know, like cross carpeting into APC? I don't think so. You know, this is about settling political um, scores, you see, okay. because I understand that they wanted a different person and the governor wanted his cousin because he wants to be to run for Senate in 2023. And this is the person that is holding the seat at the moment. So this is about selfish interest. And this is what myself and other like minds stand against. Okay, that's fine. So, you think um, Natasha stands a, ta a, a chance? I'm talking to you, Otu. Hmm. You I mean, know, if, if Natasha or the PDP, <clears throat> they go to the tribunal to try to fight this out, because the president has already congratulated the candidate and it seemed not to be seeing any wrong with what took place. To be honest, I have no uh, confidence in the election tribunals in Nigeria. To be honest, I, I don't believe, I know she has a lot of facts because I have so much video from Kogi State. But with the way the election petition tribunal in Nigeria is this carry-go attitude they have, it will be very tricky seeing that possibility that she, she would be heard in the first place. But I wish her well, I wish her to do the right thing because, of course, like I would advise her, uh, there are other international courts or other places you could go to seek redress, not just for political reasons, but for rights against humanity, for crimes against humanity, just to bring about some kind of punitive measures against the players in different ways. And she has the contacts across the world as well. But it's a sad uh, thing in Nigeria regarding election petition tribunals. Again, let's see what happens. The winner takes it all, especially yeah. if there's an incumbent government. I know. Exactly. And just to add to what mm -hmm. he said, yes. for the governor of Kogi State to come out and say that you can't nullify an election because of pockets of uh, violence. violence, those pockets of violence cost lives of people. So does it mean you've reduced human life to nothing? Mm. You know, it is highly condemnable, and, and I hope that the youths and people of like mind should rise up just like Natasha was, uh, was advocating for, okay. to get involved and, and change all this narrative. Okay, I actually have a quote somewhere here of Mr. President to the, saying that um, he is going to leave a legacy of a free and fair election in Nigeria. Um, what's your take about that statement? Uh, well, um, I, I, I know it's very difficult to lead. It's very difficult to sometimes yes. you might have very good intentions. But uh, I remember once when Obasan just said that uh, someone asked him a question saying that good luck Jonathan said he was a, a bad person. 
something like that. Yes. His response really got to me because he said, it takes more than a good person to make a good president. Okay. So uh, even though the president may have good intentions, the acts of his people and his followers and his team and the rest of the, you know, different uh, agencies and parasitals in Nigeria, they're not reflecting this, what the president is proposing. But um, I, I, I want to encourage Nigerians to, because it's now up to us to get our country right. I think we've given too much responsibility to our leaders and the presidents and too much expectations from them, like getting the elections to be proper and all the rest of it. I believe that we've not engaged enough Nigerians politically. I believe that we have about 60% of voters between the ages of 25, 18 and 25 don't engage at all. Hmm. And the blue collar jobs people, they don't engage. That's why the numbers are so small. If we can get this third option to work and engage this demographic, it will be very difficult to read because when you come in and you see thousands and millions of people turn out, I mean, look at the places where they go to shoot. You normally see, what, 100 people, 200 people. Mm -hmm. In every polling unit, there's a base of 800 to 500 vote, uh, registered voters. I mean, it, 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 when Nigerians are ready to engage Nigeria, I believe things will change. So. Just to add to what he said mm -hmm. about the president being serious about uh, stopping mm -hmm. voter rigging and election malpractices, if he really wants to do that, he should sign the Electoral Act. It is very simple. And listening to Natasha, you heard her talk about collaboration between the police, the INEC, and other security agencies. These things are happening because the Electoral Act has not been signed. So if Mr. President is very sincere about doing this, he should do this for the next generation and for this generation as well. Because once the Electoral Act is signed into law, it means that once you vote, as soon as you cast their vote, the INEC server is getting the vote. So the issue of intimidation, violence, everything is going to reduce. So it will add to the level playing ground that we are advocating for. Mm. So I want to ask Mr. President and those who work for Mr. President to please keep on pushing for him to sign it. The bill has been approved. But by why Mr. is it difficult to sign? It's just for him to put his signature. You know, many people argue that he couldn't have signed it before the election because the notice was too short. You know, the time was too short to the election mm. that to bring that kind of change. We, we kind of uh, overhaul the system. But now we have three years to the next election coming. So if he's so worried about the drastic change that the Electoral Act will bring to the polity, let him sign it now. If he loves Nigeria, let him sign it now so that we can vote in only people that we can trust. You see? And I'm, I'm very touched because the reality that the worst of us is ruling over us. That's Look right. at the APC guy. Look at the first address that he gave to the Bahasa people. Not even a current sentence. Correct sentence in three minutes. What is happening? Why are we all going about David Lloyd's spoken English? <laughs> have you seen it? No, I don't no. know. Which one do you have it? Which one do you have it? Do we have time to roll it, please? I mean, it's. I don't want to talk about his spoken language or the way he said it. But for me, it's I just bad. feel that David, David Lloyd, that's his name, he just seems like a puppet on the string. That's like right. there's some masters pulling in, I'm going to tell. That is what David Lloyd just told us in that address. My thing is this, the same Nigerians. masters can pick some other person that is... Yes, that, but they you want a yes man. They want a yes man. The, the godfathers want a yes man. It is sad. The internet has gone crazy over that address. My phone has been going off the hook. Bro, send me that video. Send me that video. It's on my wall on Facebook. It is, it is a disaster. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe this. Why are we doing this in Nigeria? Why? 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 We have brilliant, intelligent, fantastic people across the, the world. world. Yeah. And they look at the people who are getting into our political offices. We have to wake up. We've got to wake up. We've got to stand up. We'll be talking about that later. Next week, next week, you've got to tune in. And hopefully, Uchi will be nice to me. <laughs> okay, then, so this is what you can take on the show. My name remains Rose Peter Gray. I'm a very big thank you to Natasha. We are praying for her, and hopefully we'll have her in the studios next week. That's Barita, Barista Natasha Diza Poti, the governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party in Kogi State. And, of course... Iberuotu, thank you very much. The governorship candidate abundant Nigerian Renewal Party that NRP 2019 general elections in Akwaibom State and Ambassador Ugochukumora, General Secretary PDP UK. Femi Oke of the Nigerian Institute was meant to be with us today, but one way or the other, he was held back.
unfortunately. But next week, hopefully, we're going to have him. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.